happens above ground, from the snowpack to the rivers and creeks, it has an impact on what happens below ground. Masaki Hayashi has been keeping tabs on that for years. He's a hydrologist and a professor with the University of Calgary's Department of Earth, Energy and Environment. Hello. Hello. You're doing a research project in Rocky View County surrounding Calgary, monitoring well water. What story are those wells telling this year? Yeah, so we have only been monitoring these wells for the last 15 years, but uh, about half of the wells uh, we've been you know, keeping eyes on, they're at the lowest level since we started monitoring. So we are seeing the sign that the groundwater levels are going down with uh, multiple years of uh, dry conditions. Is it, does, it, does this surprise you at all? No, um, in a way not, because the Canadian prairies have this uh, climate that has multiple years of wetness followed by multiple years of uh, dryness. So this is not really uh, totally abnormal in, in the sense that this is what happens in the prairies. Right, but it's been, it's been 15 years and you say this is the lowest it's ever been. Yeah, so what, what happened uh, in the past three years is that we did not have much of a recharge of groundwater, one, two, three consecutive years. And when you say recharge, you mean water getting down into the ground? Yeah, so the, you know, either rain or snow melt water hits the ground and part of that evaporates back or taken up by the plants to the atmosphere, but there's a little bit left. So that goes all the way down to the, uh, the water table, uh, becomes groundwater. So that's called a recharge. And that hasn't been getting there? No, um, some aquifers uh, got some recharge, but um, a lot of aquifers were monitoring. They didn't get anything for the last two or three years. Can you tell me what kinds of properties you're looking at here, where, where the wells are? Yeah, so most of these folks uh, who've been working with us are either farmers or uh, the acreage owners. These are rural you know, residential homes uh, with some properties. And in exchange, you, sort of in exchange, I guess, you send out a newsletter to, to the landowners. Uh, in your last newsletter in January, what, what, what was sort of the key thing that you had to tell them? Yeah, the key thing was uh, we have the lowest water level since you know we started this, but it's not really dangerously low. So we still have enough to keep us going for a few more years. If you get recharged again in, in a few years, we'll be okay. So that was a, the key message. I, I guess typically for those who don't use well water, what, what are they using the well water for? These are primarily used for household water use, so drinking, doing dishes, taking baths. And they've never had to think about it before. It's always been there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm wondering what you're telling though the landowners that they can do to deal with the low levels. Yeah, so on individual houses, there's really not much more they can do than what they've been doing, which is to just, you know, conserve, you know, where you can. But, you know, what we really want to emphasize with this kind of program is that, so with this, uh, what we call the baseline information, if there's something strange happening, uh, we are able to detect it. So for example, the decline in the water level we've been seeing in the last two, three years is just a natural process because we have dry weather. But then on top, you have some major new user of groundwater, pumping water from the same aquifer. You're gonna see more accelerated drawdown, which is the decline in water level. So that's the way we can keep eyes on, on the condition well, of that, aquifers. That's the concern, isn't it? I mean, with with drought continuing in Alberta and the warnings about this summer, what if they, if the next thing people do is go to aquifers? What do the low levels tell you about the state of groundwater or aquifers in that part of southern Alberta? Luckily, uh, we're not in a situation um, like California or mm. some of the, the, the states in the U.S. where a large amount of water is used for agricultural water use, uh, such as irrigation. So, in a way, we are not as uh, seriously impacted, but there could be more water use. For example, um, farmland, thousands of acres of farmlands were sold and then just houses are built. So all these houses uh, uh, require water wells to provide their drinking water supply. So that will be a major shift that uh, we, we want to do it sustainably. It, it almost sounds as though you're describing the world, and I know you're saying that, that, that at this point it's not a, a trend that may continue, 
but it sounds like it might the groundwater and the dependence on it might be on a bit of an edge right now. Yeah, so the province of Alvada has closed, quote unquote, the application for new water use, you know, for river and surface water in some parts of the province. So that means if you know, someone wants to get a new water supply, one avenue is to tap into groundwater. So if that starts to happen at a major scale, uh, so that would be a problem. So that's on the horizon. I think provincial, the water managers are aware of that. Right, that, and that would be a real threat. Yeah, I, I think so, if uh, that starts to happen at many locations, yeah. If, if the province wasn't experiencing drought, you've kind of answered this already, but in simple terms, how would those aquifers normally be replenished? Yeah, so you got several years of dry weather like we've been having, and then we get a year with a big snow melt or maybe big summer rain, and then there is a big jump in the water level in the aquifer, and uh, that happens every three or four years. How is climate change affecting that? Yeah, so that's a, a big, big question, and then we uh, scientists don't really understand. Um, so with the climate change story, there are some that are clearly established, and everybody understands, for example, temperature is rising, with that, the intensity of moisture circulation in the Earth's system is you know, accelerating. So those are you know, well established, but then when it comes to specific processes at a specific location, uh, there are many things uh, that are interacting with each other and we don't know. For example, we know that the snow melt is important for groundwater recharge in the prairies. And we also know that snow is going to decrease, uh, more rain, less snow, and the snow accumulation start Later in the year, snow melt starts earlier in the year. So that much we know, but then to translate that into the amount and timing of groundwater recharge, uh, there are still a lot of processes that we don't understand about. I, I'm wondering then, as a scientist, you look to data, you don't look at the policy decisions, but I'm wondering what message you would share with Albertans as they work to find solutions to what is shaping up to be a challenging year. Yeah, uh, so I think that what province and the municipal governing bodies need to do is to ensure that any new use of groundwater is done in a sustainable manner. Looking at the recharge and then decide how much more water use we allow you know, for the new development. What is at stake if the aquifers start to be used by, as you say, more home developments or even by the agriculture industry? What's at stake? Yeah, so there are two things. Uh, one is that existing water users, uh, some wells might go dry. So that means it's a loss of the lifeline for these people. So these are you know, multi-generation farmers who have been using groundwater uh, to sustain their living. So they either have to drill deeper if they're lucky, then you, you, they can drill deeper, get more water, but they drill really deep in the bottom of the aquifer and then there's not much you can do. So that's one. The second, equally important, is that the groundwater comes out to the ground surface from springs. So the, all the little creeks you see, they're all fed by little springs. So if the water level in the aquifer goes down, the spring water, you know, the flow rate will be reduced, or even some springs may go dry. Well, that means creeks will go dry. So that's a really bad news for the environment. So those two things are the ones that uh, I think are most important. So much at stake, Masaki Hayashi. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we've spent the last several minutes talking about change, uncertainty, not knowing how to cope with the future. And over the course of, of my years on this earth, I've seen change and a lot of it. And I'll admit some of it has made me pretty sad. Growing up on the North Shore of Vancouver, I came to depend on summers that were warm but not scorching and smoke free. There's never any question about the bounty of salmon in the rivers and the oceans. My dad used to go out fishing and then bring a fish home for dinner. Now so much of that has changed, and in a sense, I grieve for what was, and I'm not alone. I think 